If you've spent any time online recently or on YouTube, you might have seen the 2024 opening ceremony of the Olympics. You might have seen the drag show performance that some Christians are calling a blasphemous portrayal of the Last Supper. What can we learn from this? What can we as believers put into practice as we attempt to relate to the world around us that is openly supporting and embracing such lifestyles? Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up ladies? Welcome to Her Journey with God. I'm Sarah, and today I wanna to talk about the opening ceremony of the 2024 Olympics. Maybe you've seen the pictures of the drag show that a lot of Christians are saying was a blasphemous portrayal of The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. Now, honestly, I'm not here to talk about whether it was or was not a portrayal of The Last Supper, whether it was meant to offend Christians, or whether it was simply a portrayal of of, uh, an old painting called Festivities. What I want to talk about is how the world around us is more and more openly supportive of these types of lifestyles. And a lot of it has actually crept into the church. And as believers, we need to know how to live in an environment that is more and more progressively supportive of drag and LGBTQ plus lifestyles and is actually pushing pushing these things on us and on our kids. We even see a child mixed in with the drag show. We see it blatantly being pushed on our children these days that drag shows are being allowed in libraries where people in drag are reading books to children or drag shows are being encouraged for children. And it's all over the place. And these days children are having to deal with the idea of choosing a gender, you know, from grade school. And it's really crazy the world that we're living in now. And so we need to know how to relate to the world around us as believers. So here's the first takeaway. We've got to know and love the truth. As believers, we can't rely on culture to tell us what's right or to tell us what love is. We hear the message, love is love these days, but the reality is that sin is sin. And we have to rely on the word of God to remind us what love actually looks like. Here's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses four through six. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. We see this blatant show of pride and debauchery, and we need to know how to relate to the world around us and how to treat other people in the midst of what they're calling love and tolerance and affirmation. How do we love people without affirming sin? Love rejoices in the truth. As believers, we need to know the truth and love the truth of God, and His truth is only found in the Word of God, in the Bible. And um, these days we hear a lot about my truth or your truth, but we don't hear a lot about the truth of God's word because the reality is what I believe is true, my truth might conflict with your truth and our perspective. If we're calling my perspective or my feelings to be truth or your perspective or your feelings to be truth, those can very quickly contradict and then it's not true at all because it it's not both of them can be true if they're different. And so we need to be relying on the truth of God's word. And we cannot just pick and choose verses out of the Bible that speak to our truth. We need to rely on the whole word of God, the truth of God's word to guide our lives. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. The Bible teaches us what love is and what sin is. And homosexuality, debauchery, sexual immorality, these are sin according to the Bible. And we need to know what the truth is and we need to love the truth. We can't delight in evil as Christians. During an interview, Lauren Daigle, the popular Christian singer, 
was asked, do you feel that homosexuality is a sin? Do you feel that homosexuality is a sin? You know, I, I can't honestly answer on that. I have too many people that I love that they are homosexual. I don't know. I can't say one way or the other. I'm not God. So when yeah. people ask questions like that, that's what my go-to is. I just say read the Bible and find out for yourself. And when you find out, let me know because I'm learning. How can we tell other people to obey the word of God if we don't know the word of God and if we're not living it ourselves? 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexual immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. We need to know for ourselves what the truth is so that we can put it into practice so that our lives can be a reflection of the gospel. The second takeaway is we've got to live the truth. It's one thing to know the Word of God and to know what sin is and what it looks like to obey God, but it's a whole other thing to put it into practice and to live the truth. We've got to be the salt and light of the world. Wouldn't it be a shame if people in our workplace and our communities did not know that we were Christians? Matthew 5, 15, and 16. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5 13, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. We might think, ah, I don't want to be a light at work. People will know I'm a Christian and that'll be embarrassing. We can't pick and choose where we are Christians. We should be Christians in every area of our lives. As we renew our minds with the word of God, it teaches us how to live in this world around us. Titus 2, 11 through 14, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. The word of God teaches us to leave that old life of sin and to live righteous and holy lives in Christ. And so we need to take a litmus test for ourselves and discover do we look like the world around us? Are we living the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Or are we allowing culture to influence the church and our lives personally? Do I dress like the world? Do I talk like the world? Do I live like the world? Do I sleep around? Do I go get drunk at bars? Do I fight with people? Do I cuss people out? We've got to take a litmus test of ourselves because we have to judge the church and we first have to judge ourselves. Scripture says to take the log out of your own eye before you try to take a speck out of somebody else's eye. Are we really walking according to the gospel? Are we living the truth or are we living just like the world? Because honestly, the world is not going to listen to us if we are living like the world. How can we preach the gospel if we are acting just like everybody else? And so we've got to to know the truth, love the truth, and live the truth. The next thing after we're doing that, we've got to speak the truth in love. Often as women, we might be hesitant to say anything. We often go along to get along. We don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to make a scene. We don't want people to be offended. We want everybody to get along. But the reality is, as Christians and as women, we are called to speak the truth in love. We are not called to speak the truth through yelling at people or saying, you sinner, you're going to hell. We've got to speak the truth in love. And love is patient. Love is kind. It's 
not boastful. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not delighting in evil, but it rejoices in the truth. We've got to let the Bible define the reality of what love is so that we can speak the truth with love. How do we love other people without affirming sin? 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 12 and 13. It says, For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? We can't forget that as Christians, it is not our job to judge outsiders or unbelievers. God judges the world. God judges unbelievers. That's not for us. What we do is we judge sin in the church. And so as we see sin creeping into the church in areas like drag shows or homosexual preachers, it's our job to stand up and say what the truth is in the church. And then for people outside the church, we speak the truth of the gospel in love, hoping that some of them might come to the knowledge of truth. Before we came to know the Lord, we were stuck in our sins just like the world around us. And so we can't forget where we have been. We used to be dead in our sins before we came to the Lord. And so we have to see people the way that we can look back and see ourselves when we were lost in sin. I can say, wow, I can't believe I would have gone to hell if I didn't accept the Lord like that was me too and with that new life in Christ is the call to be ambassadors for Christ 2 Corinthians 5 18 through 20 all this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that is in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation therefore we are ambassadors ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. And so we should show concern for the people outside the church, knowing that they're going to go to hell if they don't put their faith in Jesus. And so to show love, we've got to speak the truth and let them know the gospel of Jesus, but we've got to do it in love because the world is not going to listen to us if we are just beating them over the head and yelling at them and um, pointing out all the bad things. We've got to share the truth in love. And here's a few scriptures that tell us how to do that. Colossians 4, 5 through 6. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. And a servant of the Lord must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach and forbearing. He must gently reprove those who oppose him in the hope that God may grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of the truth. 1 Peter 3.15 But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give a defense to everyone who asks you the reason for the hope that is in you, but respond with gentleness and respect. Ephesians 4.29 Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up the one in need and bringing grace to those who listen. Scripture is really clear that we are not meant to be yelling at people, cursing people out because of these blatant shows of sin, but with kindness and grace, seasoned with salt, seasoned with the gospel. Here's one way that we can discover if we're sharing the truth in love or not. We've got to ask ourselves, are we praying for people? Are we praying for the people who were doing drag at the Olympics? Are we praying for unbelievers that they would come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and to a saving faith that changes us from the inside out that causes us to leave that life of sin? Are we praying for people are, or are we just judging people? Because it's real easy to judge people, but it takes effort. It takes love to pray for people. And if we're not praying, then we're probably not loving. The next takeaway is that we have to prepare for persecution. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. We're not promised an easy ride. We're not promised that the world around us is going to love us or get along with us. The world hated Jesus. It will hate us too for the message of the gospel. And it's going to call us haters. It's going to call us intolerant, probably homophobes, transphobic. Uh, we've got to be prepared for that. John 15, 20. Remember the word that I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you as well. 
If they kept my word, they will keep yours as well. 2 Corinthians 4, 9. We are persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. While some people will come to the knowledge of the truth and accept Jesus and turn from that lifestyle, we're promised that people will hate us. And so we need to know that going into it. 1 Peter 4, 19. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. When we do suffer persecution, we've got to trust God that he's going to bring us through that situation and help us in the midst of it. So friends, I hope this was encouraging. I hope this is a good reminder to know the truth, to love the truth of God's word, to put it into practice in our own lives, and to share it with others around us in love, not with anger, but with love and grace and wisdom and to be prepared for persecution because we are promised that life is not going to be easy as we put our faith in Christ. So God bless you.